Good morning, everyone. It's great to be back at O'Reilly AI. Um, so let's just jump in. I only have 10 minutes, so I want to get the most of it. Um, the picture I'm showing you now is a picture that we usually, a slide that we usually show people when we're either training on deep learning or what Ben calls the new, new oil, or when we ask people how they're going to explain it to the people in their organizations that don't understand it. And what I like about it, it actually portrays something that is really quite simple to understand. We take a model, we put inputs into it, we go through some serious, complicated calculations, and then we create an output model, an, a trained model that we can actually solve problems with. Now we know as we add more and more data, there's going to be more and more patterns in that data, so we have to have more nodes, and it becomes a little complicated even more. But the good news is, with effort, and I think we're already started hearing about some great efforts today, and with the right compute model, we can actually get incredible insights. Now, the benefit of working at NVIDIA is I get to work with a lot of customers. I get to see a lot of industries, and we talk to people that have adopted the NVIDIA compute model because they're trying to overcome some of the complications that they had in early attempts in machine learning and AI. Now, we've seen incredible expansion in a number of frameworks and platforms. Um, most people use TensorFlow, but we also see CNTK. We're seeing a lot in Cafe 2. We're seeing a lot of PyTorch. We're seeing Keras. A lot of things are coming on, and these things are being optimized and really getting great gains. But we're also seeing a lot of AI research leaders and just the industry as a whole and our customers adopting new modes, right? So I think some of the things we just heard of now, we're seeing in object detection or image detection a lot of CNNs. But obviously, we're also seeing a lot when it's going on to trying to fund un unlabeled data. How do I get through that? And so we're seeing a lot of unsupervised learning. We're seeing a lot of actually autoencoders coming on. If our customers are in financial services or healthcare and they're actually trying to find time sequence data, they're using a lot of RNNs. The same when you're actually trying to do social media. The same when you're actually trying to go through a lot of the process of text when you're trying to do translation or encoding from there. So we're seeing a lot of different approaches um, and a lot of great successes that are based on this new model. Um, and that's why I, I do like the fact that Ben calls it the new, new oil, because it is. It actually solves a lot of problems, and we're seeing a lot of great solutions coming out of the training. But we can't forget the importance of inference with technologies like TensorRT that actually are optimizing the deployment, and that becomes really key when we're rolling these services out, and it leads to a true success. And I actually want to spend the most of my time now talking about some of those successes. So let's jump in. So one is a future success, an announcement we just made uh, with Volkswagen at the auto show that's going on in Europe right now. Uh, Volkswagen has announced that they're going to be incorporating NVIDIA GPU AI advanced machines systems into their new data lab. What's really cool about this data lab is that it's going to be where their data scientists are going to be doing all sorts of projects, but one that I actually think is really cool is that they're going to be focusing on how to solve and understand and optimize traffic through cities. But what's also great about this is it's the cornerstone of a new startup program that they're launching. And the startup program is focused on funding, so helping with financial, but also technical help to startups that are focused on the automobile industry. And I think we can't underestimate the importance of this because it's these startups that are going to be driving a lot of change and bringing a lot of value. So we spend a lot of time in the automobile companies, but this is one really thing that I think is really exciting. So let's talk about some others. So Atlas is another one. They focused on deep learning for portable diagnostics, and the device that you're seeing here is a diagnostic that actually can take a drop of blood and do analysis of that blood really quick. They like to point out that it's one drop of blood two minutes, and preventative health care. Now, this has already gone through clinical trials. It's available in, in clinics around the country, as well as in patients' homes, and it's going through FDA approval right now. What's great about it, if you think about the convenience and the capabilities of letting patients do their white blood count test at home, these tests are indicators of how the leukemia is proceeding. If you're at early indications of inflammation or infection, it's also an indicator whether you're having a relapse. So the ability to actually detect this and solve this is a great component. Now, to do this, Athelas actually uses Keras and TensorFlow. They do both supervised learning for when they're actually creating the base models and going from there, and unsupervised learning when they're trying to do the labeling and actually speed up that whole process as they bring more and more tests in. And then finally, they have a reinforcement learning process that they use when they have a back-end dashboard that they actually have to label. 
Another example, completely different industry, is Deep Instinct. Deep Instinct focuses on cybersecurity, and they've created a comprehensive defense against the most evasive malware that is attacking PCs, endpoints, servers, mobile devices. And really, the focus on mobile devices is so important because by 2020, 80% of us will access our enterprise networks via mobile devices. So this focus has made them able to actually have zero day, which is when you have a malfunction or a hole in your software and hackers can attack it, and advanced persistent threat protection in real time with unprecedented accuracy. So that is really great. Now, when they were going down this process, they realized they couldn't use CNNs and some of the other frameworks that are out there and the different models was because they actually work off raw binary files. Raw binary files don't actually have location correlation like an image does. So you can actually say pixel to pixel and how it looks from there. So they had to develop their own framework. Um, it's a proprietary framework based on CUDA that is actually lightweight, efficient, and really is focused on cybersecurity. All their training is supervised. But the fact that they have millions and hundreds of millions of files, both malicious and legitimate files, many form factors that they put through, is their strength. Another company, which is not a startup, actually, is probably the, if not one of the largest um, software companies in the world, SAP. SAP made a great announcement recently where they announced that they're having a whole portfolio of machine learning services that they develop with deep learning. Um, it's their Leonardo brand. This one that I'm showing you here is actually really interesting to me because it's focusing on customer service, and I think it was great to follow on Salesforce to highlight the importance of this. The, the service ticket intelligence actually learns and understands the semantics of an unstructured message. So when the message comes in, it can actually auto-classify it and route it based on its priority, customer, or the problem itself. And then the best part is it starts recommending the best answers and the knowledge-based articles that will solve that problem. SAP uses TensorFlow pretty much across the board. For this particular service, they use CNN, and they're actually using an attentive mechanism to help guide the process to choose the appropriate words to get the most accuracy out of it. So it's a really good thing they're doing there. All right, Digital Genius. Um, for anybody that may be Dutch in the audience, you will be feeling very familiar with this service. Um, KLM uses it. It's an AI-assisted and fully autonomous, really helps the customer operations. How do you interact with your customer? How do you give them data? Um, one of the great things they're doing here, and I really think this is going to be something that helps adopt AI into the enterprise, they're plugging it directly in. They integrate directly with the leading customer service software. So whether it's Salesforce, SAP, Zendesk, others, and has that, and uses the standard communication devices, whether it's your email or other components, it makes it work. They use TensorFlow for research, PyTorch for their production. Um, their supervised learning is for creating the question and answer modules, and they use unsupervised learning for the rest of the process. All right, Datalog. Actually, Datalog is a great company because they focus on uh, what a lot of us has been struggling with for quite some time, data ingestion, right? So they use deep learning powered sort of pipelines that prepare data for this ingestion process. And so if you think about it, they work with a lot of Fortune 1000 companies, and what they're helping them do is they, they have this, all this data, and they want to use it in other applications, and they take it through a pipeline and work from there. I like to think of this as sort of the future of where ETL is going, except the way they like to talk about it is get, know, and transfer. So in the get process, they're using a data graph, which is great for storing the data and coming from there. But the real magic comes in the no capability. So data log ontology mappers, which are really just models that structurally and semantically understand your data, then prepare the data, and then it moves into the, the transfer phase. So when it's going into this transform phase, it focuses on what's important to the customer. What are the characteristics of the data, and how does it allow the data to be more transparent to what the, the, the user wants it to be, and how did it get there? And again, they too actually use a mechanism that actually helps guide through the process and get it from there. They use both supervised and unsupervised, mostly supervised in the beginning, and then they build on from there. So with that, um, I'd like to put it out to you, all of you. Um, we have many sessions here today. We would like to hear from you. What are sort of the problems you're trying to solve? Which tools do you like to use? And where do you want to do this? Do you want to do it in the cloud? Or you can do it on-prem? I'd like to thank uh, Ben for the call out for my DGX1 product. But really, there's so many opportunities to get started. I wish you would uh, the best of luck at the show. Happy to engage with you all and uh, look forward to a great couple days. Thanks so much.